But the 3D camera tracker is a nifty, powerful, helpful feature. What it does is it looks at a video clip where there's been some kind of camera motion. It could be panning, zooming, trucking, point of view, dolly, crane, you name it. Some kind of camera motion. And then it creates a camera that tries to emulate that motion. And then allows you to put things on top of the video clip. The video clip remains in 2D space, but the things on top of it are in 3D space. And you can put things on top of that video clip and the camera moves, making it look like those things are attached to the video, like they're moving with the video's motion. It's really phenomenal. So in this lesson, I'm going to explain how it works. In the next lesson, I'm going to explain how you apply things to that motion. And in the lesson following that, I'll show you how to create what's called shadow catchers. So to follow along, go to Working Files, open up After Effects Projects, and open up 2001 3D Camera Tracking. The 3D Camera Tracker works with video clips where the video clips were shot by a camera in motion. It tries to recreate that camera's motion. So if a camera zooms or pans, was a point of view shot, a trucking shot, a dolly shot, it tries to recreate that motion. So for example, here's a shot of these buildings. If I pull back here a little bit, you'll see that it's a zoom, like so. So the camera zoomed out. The 3D camera tracker can simulate that, and when it simulates that, you can put objects in the scene that look like they're stuck in the scene. I'll show you what I mean by going through this comp to show you the finished result. Those stained glass windows obviously were not in the original, but now it looks like they're stuck in the scene. I'll just move back here a bit, and you can see that camera movement. And look at that. It looks like they're absolutely attached to that building. The way this works is the 3D camera tracker analyzes the clip and creates a camera right down here. Then you can put objects in the scene on connect points. And then the camera moves, but those objects don't. Let's just take a look at a custom view here, and you'll see what I mean. There's the camera, and there are those three objects. You don't see the video clip, because in the custom view, you don't see things that are in 2D space. The video clip stays in 2D space, but you put things here in 3D space. I'm going to click on the camera, and you're going to see the camera's motion now. Look at that motion track. Essentially equaling the original camera's motion, that pullback, that zoom back like that. Meanwhile, those guys stay stuck in place, but it looks like they're part of the scene. I'll go back to the active camera view. And there you go, like so. Let's take a look at this vineyard. The vineyard is a trucking shot with a little bit of a pan left. Just a little pan to the left while the trucking shot goes by there. So you can see how the camera moved there. Now, this is just a 2D video, but the 3D camera tracker can simulate that camera motion. I'll go back over here. I've added this text in these drop shadows there inside that scene, and it looks like they are stuck in the scene. This is the same kind of process you saw a moment ago. I'll scroll down here a bit. There's the camera. If I press U, it is the only thing that has keyframes here in this entire scene. Nothing else moves, just the camera. Let's just take a look at that in the custom view here. I'll pull back a bit, controller command hyphen or minus. There's the camera track, just like you'd expect it to be. That dolly shot, that trucking shot with a little bit of a pan left. There's the text and a shadow catcher behind. The shadow catcher is just a solid layer that has been switched over to shadow only. But here you see the actual solid layer. Just like that. And this is a light that was added to the scene when I added the text to the scene. In addition to creating a camera and adding objects to the scene like lights and solid layers, you can also use the camera tracker to set what's called the ground plane and the origin. Let me go back over here to the active camera view. I'll zoom back in a bit. I'll click on that layer, Vineyard, and go to the Effect Controls panel and click on the Effect 3D Camera Tracker. When I do that, you get these little track points. I'll make them larger here so you can see them better. Those track points are essentially attached to objects here. As we go forward, those track points will follow the motion. That's what the 3D Camera Tracker does when it analyzes a clip. I'll increase the target size. A target appears when you hover over those points, like so. See that little red target showing up there? I'll make it larger so you can see it better. This is a flat scene, but this gives you the 3D effect of going down the row. But on top of that, you can select what's called the ground plane. If I hover down the bottom here, this is the ground plane. And if I click here and right click and set the ground plane in the origin, then this works really well with Cinema 4D because you can open up this entire comp with the camera in it, the solid layers, the light, not the text, but those other guys are in there. And they will show up inside Cinema 4D, and you can see how this scene will play inside Cinema 4D and add objects there. So you could add something that's right there in the ground plane or relative to the ground plane. So I could put, let's say, a hot air balloon here just floating across the sky, a 3D object that's made inside Cinema 4D. It really is remarkable. 
So what I'll do now is explain how you apply this effect and look at some of its properties. And again, I explain how you add objects to a scene and how you work with Cinema 4D in separate lessons inside the Infinite Skills course. So let's do that by going to these first comps here. It's just a video clip. I want to apply the 3D camera to this effect. Now there are multiple ways to find the 3D camera tracker. It's an effect. So if I go over here and type in camera, if I scroll down a little bit here, eventually you'll see 3D camera tracker under the perspective group. Do the same thing up here inside effect. Go down to perspective. There it is again. Some people access it through the tracker panel. So go to window, tracker, and you see something called track camera. That is the link to the 3D camera tracker. Nevertheless, I'm just going to take this guy and just drag it down to that layer. And it starts analyzing it. You get this blue banner here, and it says it's analyzing it in the background. In fact, you can work on other comps, do other work, even leave After Effects, and it'll still work on this thing while you've minimized After Effects. And you can get the sort of rundown on how it's going over here, six minutes, five minutes. So at this point, I'm going to pause the video and fast forward and then show you what happens after this point once it's finished analyzing. All right, the analysis is just about completed. You should know that this is a 26 second clip or so, and it's taken about six minutes to do this analysis. All the data will be stored inside the After Effects project file. As long as this effect is connected to this clip, that data will be stored in the project file, such that later on, if you want to solve the camera, which is what's happening now, if you want to solve it in a different way, the data will always be there for you to change the way you solve the camera. You don't need to reanalyze it. So what's happening now is it's solving the camera. It's creating the keyframes for this camera. It doesn't automatically add a camera to the comp. You need to do that manually by clicking on the Create Camera button or clicking on a set of those target points and then adding the camera that way. And the solving camera process does take a while, but when it's done, you get a bunch of these little track points or target points right there. If I hover over them, you see the target. Let me change the size of the track points so you can see them better. And those track points attempt to simulate the perspective here inside this clip. If I hover over them, it tries to match the shape of that building there, sort of angling a little bit toward the left there, a little bit away from the camera. When I go around the corner here, sometimes it actually does turn the angle, sometimes it doesn't. Even if it doesn't, you can click here, for example, and then right click and add something like a text in camera, or a solid in camera, or a null in a camera. Also a shadow catcher, which is the thing that was casting the shadow with the text in front of it. You can add those guys, and they'll be facing the wrong direction, but then you can always rotate them so they face the right direction, but they'll be stuck in place, which is the important thing. Sometimes when the 3D camera tracker attempts to solve the camera, it solves it in a way that doesn't seem to work very well, so you need to help it out. Over here in the shot type, you can change it from fixed angle of view to variable zoom. Now this was a zoom, but it was a zoom from a fixed location, so that's probably the better choice there. If you go down a little bit farther, you go to advanced, and under the solve method, you can change from auto detect, which is the default, to something else. You can say it's a flat scene, a tripod pan. Tripod pans are a little bit tougher to solve, so you need to tell After Effects this is a camera that's locked down, but it's panning as opposed to a trucking shot, which is easier to solve. And you can see the method that was used was the mostly flat scene. You don't need to say tripod pan because it wasn't really a pan, it's a zoom. Now, as is the case with the warp stabilizer VFX effect, you can auto delete points across time. You can say, don't pick these points, don't look at these particular points, just focus on these guys, and that makes the analysis go a little bit faster. If I click on this again to turn it on, you can decide, I don't really need these points anymore, so let's get rid of them by just marquee selecting them, and then saying, we'll delete those guys across time by pressing the delete key. And it'll attempt to delete them as far into the project as it can until it starts seeing those points showing up again. Then it reanalyzes from that point on. So that's the basic process of applying this effect. The next step, adding objects to the scene or setting the ground plane and the origin, I discussed in other lessons in my Infinite Skills course on After Effects.